Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming to our presentation today. Uh, today, we're going to discuss uh, a little bit about using uh, VMware technology as a backend uh, to OpenStack. The agenda for today, uh, the first portion uh, is going to be done by myself. We're going to go through some use cases around uh, why you may want to use uh, VMware in an OpenStack environment, some of the benefits VMware brings from a technology and operations level. Uh, then we'll go into the um, OpenStack and VMware integration as it stands today. And then finally, uh, Julian will go into the developer side of the house. So we'd like to split the, uh, the talk into two parts. One's more management operations technology, and the second's uh, developer aspect of it. Okay, so who are we? Uh, my name is Justin Jardina. I currently am the CTO at Island Internet Solutions. I've been an open source Cisco and VMware admin for uh, many years now. Uh, I have to admit I'm a network geek at heart. I got into networking in the 90s and as uh, software defined networking and, and technologies like VXLAN are starting to take off today, that's what interests me the most. Um, I'm also a Cisco champion, VXpert, and uh, I'm, I'm a member of a lot of uh, technical advisory boards uh, with VMware and Cisco. And uh, my current role at Island is uh, I'm in charge of our global cloud footprint and the operations. Test. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Julian, and I'm uh, working at Island with Justin, uh, but more on the uh, development, uh, development level. So I've been doing Python and Java for over 15 years now. I actually started with uh, a big <coughs> Python project, which is the Zop application server back in the days, for those who remember. And uh, I'm basically building a, a platform, a API, and customer-facing portal for Island Cloud, uh, and I'll get a little bit to it uh, in the second part of the presentation. So I'll let Justin start. Okay, so a little bit about Island. Uh, we're an internet service provider, uh, now a cloud service provider. We've been in business for 18 years. We have seven data centers across the globe. Uh, and we've been uh, doing virtualization and cloud solutions for about seven years now. A couple of awards that we won that we're pretty proud of. We uh, won awards with Forrester and Virtualization Review around DR as a service and infrastructure as a service. And of course, we won some VMware awards uh, around the service provider uh, industry. OK, so the first part of the um, presentation, I would like to clear the air and say we are not uh, employed by VMware. We do not have any religious beliefs around VMware, Hyper-V, KVM, or Citrix. Uh, we are not here to argue about VMware. We're just basically here to talk about our experience over the last six years with VMware as an underlying platform and the benefits we've gained from it and where we think we can go with it with OpenStack. Okay, so some of the use cases that we uh, see with uh, VMware. So, of course, why is it interesting for somebody like Island? Um, as I mentioned, we are a cloud provider. We offer, uh, I don't want to say a niche, but we offer a pretty unique uh, play in the cloud industry. We work with a lot of customers around uh, strict MSAs, uh, uh, SLAs. We have to uh, develop custom solutions for customers. Um, we also have to deal with a very large environment. Uh, we have a global cloud footprint. We have to, you know, some kind of way make those data centers work with each other and offer uh, global uh, redundancy across those. And also, internal operations, staffing, and efficiency. As I said before, we've been dealing with VMware for about six years now. And to pull the plug on the VMware architecture that we have and move to another hypervisor would be pretty uh, disastrous for us, or it would take a long time to, to recover from. The second use case, uh, I think, would play a lot. Uh, it, it plays to Island, but it would also play a lot to some of the enterprise guys in the room. Uh, it's leveraging your investment in your existing infrastructure. So if you run a VMware shop today, chances are that with uh, the VMware integration that's out today and that's coming, uh, you can leverage what you already have and know, and we think that's huge. And again, using existing architectures and knowledge, although the OpenStack components may not plug directly into what you're running today, chances are that with a few custom tweaks, uh, you can run a v an OpenStack environment on top of what you have. And then finally, let developers be developers. Uh, I don't want to make a developer in the room aggravated with me, but usually we don't want developers designing the, the architecture and the, um, uh, the network and compute side of the, of the, of the house. Uh, we really want to rely on and give them a platform that they can develop against, whether that's an API or an SDK. And we let our ops team manage the operational and infrastructure side. We let our developers do the developer side. 
So some of the benefits about using v vSphere and Enterprise, real quick, by a show of hands, uh, who in the room is actually using VMware today? A lot, okay. Is anybody a developer uh, in the house that's uh, working with OpenStack that is trying to tie that into VMware? Not too many, hmm, interesting, okay. So uh, unfortunately, this may be old news to some of the people that are uh, used to VMware in the, in the house today, but the four main things that we really uh, enjoy working with VMware on is VMware's history, SLA, and support. Uh, VMware is uh, a huge, uh, has a huge footprint in the data center industry. The d VMware is in the, all the top uh, um, Fortune 100 companies, and they've been around for a long time. Also, what makes sense to us is the VMware dedication to support for different verticals. So a lot of our customers are in the healthcare industry. Some guys might do credit card transactions online, and VMware has the certifications needed to design the backend infrastructure to support that. So if you're developing an OpenStack cloud, say maybe for a, for a healthcare client, uh, you can be uh, rest assured that the uh, backend infrastructure is capable of supporting that. Uh, operations, uh, this is where uh, you know, I think the numbers are pretty astounding, and this is based on the natural progression at VMware. Uh, and an environment like ours, scale is huge. So in today's VMware environments, uh, and we're gonna start talking about something called Virtual Center, but Virtual Center can support up to 512 comp compute nodes and 4,000 VMs per cluster. So you're talking about a tens of thousands of certified uh, architecture scale, and also the, the VM sizes on a VMware environment, although we don't <laughs> recommend these, but the, the numbers today are astounding. For instance, you can put almost a terabyte of memory on one VM. Uh, diagnostics, that's a big one. Um, so some of the talks I've been uh, going to this week were around collecting diagnostics around OpenStack deployments, maybe collecting uh, log entries, it, you know, and, and working with it with Julian, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to take into consideration. What's nice about the VMware platform is that they consolidate your diagnostics into one area. So vCenter does a lot of this on its own, as well as there's third-party products or third-party offerings by VMware, like vCenter Operations, that can actually dig down deep in the infrastructure and give you visibility kind of out of the box. Uh, performance, uh, it's no argument that VMware is a uh, leader in the performance around uh, the ESXi hypervisor. Also, what's really unique is that uh, all performance metrics for your VMware environment live in one place. So again, we're talking about something called Virtual Center. So things like uh, disk latency, disk read IO, memory utilization, CPU utilization, that's all um, uh, gathered in one central place. And there's an API to extract all that information if you're building your own portal like we are. And then finally, troubleshooting. Uh, again, our operations team at iLand, if a customer calls and says, hey, you know, my VM's running slow. I mean, th there's a whole gamut of things that, that, could, that, that could be wrong. And what we like about vCenter and what we're gonna talk about vCenter operations is that it gives you a, a holistic view into all pieces of the infrastructure. So not only can you see uh, VM metrics that could be potentially be a problem, but you can also see underlying issues. For instance, uh, the vCenter operations, we can plug into hardware vendors like HP, Dell, Cisco, whatever. So you can predict uh, hardware failures or uh, performance uh, issues and actually see what's going on before your customer does. Next, uh, some of the technology that we find most important as a service provider around vCenter and, v and vSphere in general. Um, sorry about all the acronyms, but DRS is a, is a great one. It's called Distributed Resource Scheduler that basically intelligently uh, starts VMs on hosts that have the capacity, and it can also migrate VMs in real time from hosts around your clusters. So if one host is getting to say 80, 90% CPU usage, uh, these systems can migrate VMs across hosts with no downtime uh, on the fly. Uh, HA is another big one. Um, we've all ran into situations where hardware fails. Uh, in VMware, they call it a purple screen of death, but basically is, it's equivalent to a kernel panic. Whatever the reason is, if your host ever fails, HA can uh, actually put VMs on existing hosts. Yes, it requires a reboot, but it's minimal downtime. SDRS is another one. Uh, it's more along the storage side. So what storage DRS can do is if you have data stores or SAN volumes that are starting to fill up on space and more VMs are trying to get onboarded via your portal, uh, the system can intelligently move these VMs, again, with no downtime to other data stores that do have space. And it can also take into effect things like IO metrics and latency. So if one data store has got a 10 milliseconds of latency and one has two milliseconds, the system can dynamically move stuff around for you. Uh, working with my, our friends over at Rackspace, uh, I know that some of the systems uh, early on, it took a lot of uh, algorithms and coding to get that type of functionality to work. 
and uh, you know it's not always um, <clears throat> it's not always reliable. You can rest assured that with uh, the V Center, this stuff's been around for years and, and it's been working great. And then finally, Ops and Log Insight. Ops stands for V Center Operations and Log Insight. Uh, basically, what that is is the uh, the full suite of metrics around VMs in your hardware environment. So I think the number today is like four million. I, I don't know, but it's in the millions of metrics that this system connects. Again, all these metrics are presented via vCenter, so you can dig down in depth and see uh, what's going on with your infrastructure at all times. And we think that's a huge uh, a huge win. And then finally, uh, VMware's uh, contributions to the SDN stack. As you guys know or don't know, uh, VMware acquired NYSERA. Uh, they also have uh, their own technology called the vSwitch and the vCNS. And basically, these are full layer two through layer seven uh, virtual or software-defined networks. Uh, at, at Island, we've been a, a SDN, an SDN user for a number of years now, first starting with vCNS. And uh, we migrated over to something called VXLAN, but we have very large scale deployments of these uh, technologies and they work great day to day. So, for the guys here, guys and girls here that uh, are not familiar with VMware uh, or vCenter, I'll just go over this slide very quickly. In the green box, you see a vCenter server. It is a central management point for all of your virtual machines and ESX servers. And what Julian will speak on and what, what I think is great for a developer is that all metrics are pulled, I'd say, a high number of metrics are pulled from the vCenter uh, API. And Julian will go through that uh, in a second. As far as Island goes, I'm trying not to talk too much about our company, but I, I just wanted to, to talk about how we scale. We scale horizontal. We don't create huge compute clusters. But remember that this is all managed by vCenter. So as we scale horizontally with something called VXLAN, we can create pods as needed uh, as the capacity grows on these pods. And then say a customer needs VMs tied to his same network that originated in pod one. Two years from now, we're in pod N. We can bring up these VMs and have them talk to each other as we scale. This is a, this is a technology that's been uh, around at VMware for a couple of years now. Finally, uh, how we look at things, and I think this will really play into Julian's development discussion, but when we design an iLAN pod, we consider all of our uh, services that are around that pod um, clients of the pod. So what I mean by that is we, over the years, we have developed a repeatable and very reliable pod infrastructure. We happen to use uh, Cisco UCS. Um, of course, we're using VMware. But basically, our pods are, we almost consider them commodities. Everything is automated. The configurations are automated. We can plan them down in another geography very easily. The trick is to get the services that need resources from those pods um, uh, to, to access them. So if you take a look at the slide, our DR as a service, our, maybe our VMware vCloud, our OpenStack or portal, we treat those as clients, all accessing the APIs we're about to talk about. So, Shifting gears a little bit, what is the current state of OpenStack integration with vSphere? I realize that there's one uh, component on here that is not in here, which is Solometer, and we can talk about that. But today, if you look at the top row, you have Horizon, CLI tools, and API. Those are the traditional services that could or couldn't be public facing that your admins, users, tenants, whatever you'd like to call them, would use to access your system. And then as far as the OpenStack components go, uh, today Nova speaks directly with vCenter and ESXi, uh, Neutron with NSX, and then Cinder and Glance again with vCenter. And remember, I think you're starting to see a common thread here. Although NSX uh, looks different, it is a component that gets installed and managed somewhat in vCenter, and the rest of these components talk directly with vCenter. So when you want to spin up a VM in Horizon, it's actually going to make an API call of vCenter, uh, do the work, and bring the VM online. Also, what you notice, too, is some of the v, uh, cloud operation stuff that I talked about that makes it really nice to say, okay, well, look, I got, her, I got uh, OpenStack working, I can deploy VMs, but how do I manage this on a day-to-day -day basis? How can I make sure my customers get the uh, performance that they need? And that's where these uh, other, other products by VMware come in, and we use these extensively. One other thing I forgot to mention, too, about Log Insight. Log Insight uh, ties in with the vCenter operation suite and it can be a receiver for uh, syslog messages. So for instance, in our environment, we have all of our ESXi servers uh, communicating with Log Insight. Not only can we see the logs in one central place, can uh, search on logs, can do things like that, but uh, the vCenter operation suite is uh, intelligent enough to decipher some of these logs. So for instance, if we get a syslog that has an issue about a SCSI timeout, say on a, uh, on a storage device, 
uh, we can actually get alerts from that. So to have that all in one place is, is really powerful. Okay, now this slide, if anybody's in the room that is working at VMware, this is, remember I, I wrote loosely, I italicized it, and I underlined it, and I see a lot of people taking pictures of it. So here's the disclaimer. The left-hand side is for the VMware guys. The right-hand side is for the OpenStack guys. And what I'm attempting to do is, although they're not direct hooks into these components from VMware and OpenStack, well, not all of them, uh, I just wanted to get a VMware guy's thinking to the, to the terminology. Julian's gonna touch on this, but the first time you see VMware, it's V-everything. It's, it's confusing. At the same time, if you're a VMware guy and you see a word like Nova or Neutron, it really doesn't mean anything until you start reading about it. So what I wanted to do in this slide is, if you're familiar with a VMware environment, you'll see that, okay, well, hey, I know what VMware SSO and inventory services, uh, Keystone is, is the acceptable uh, equivalent in OpenStack. vCenter server ESXi, okay, well, there is a Nova hook in that, and we, we saw that in the other thing. So I think this is a good, uh, a good thing to get started if you uh, never have seen either environment. Okay, and with that, I'll pass it over to Julian, and he can uh, give you his take on what it was like developing against uh, VMware, and there you go. Thank you, Justin. <clears throat> so hi, so obviously the software define everything, API programmability is a pretty hot topic in the industry right now. So uh, we wanted to take a look and uh, see uh, the technology <coughs> in a developer point of view. Um, so the big question is, okay, obviously Justin highlighted a lot of um, pretty strong uh, features of VMware and the advantages you can have deploying it uh, for the enterprise, but is it actually offering the same advantages for like every developers? So first, like any developers, like programmers in the room? Okay, couple. Uh, how many of you guys uh, actually program the uh, VMware uh, API, the VMware stack? Cool. And what about uh, the open, uh, programming OpenStack? All right. Okay, so let's take a look at it. So what is it like to actually program the VMware stack? So uh, I started actually uh, programming the VMware stack uh, recently, beginning of 2013, and I come from, uh, from uh, basically the open source land. So I've been programming like open source framework, my, uh, my whole career, and I was actually the first time I was touching and programming like a proprietary stack such as VMware. So there's a couple of things that are pretty interesting that I, I, can, rem I can still remember. is the first impression when you're starting to dig into it and start to program it. So the first thing is that remember the Justin slides, the last one, the acronyms. You basically see V, E, X, V, Y, V stuff, etc. You never really know uh, what's doing what. Uh, and uh, and uh, this is like one uh, of the big problems because one, you have to find what exactly those products does, what's behind the acronym, and then look for documentation uh, for the SDK or, uh, or any other, other, other kind of information. Then the other thing is that we are back in another religious debate, which is a Java, Java versus you know something else, Python, PHP, like whatever, like people actually like uh, preach uh, these days. And uh, why it's because well, uh, if you're like programming VMware, you can do it obviously using Python. This is uh, how it's used for the for OpenStack. But uh, Java is the first class citizen in uh, VMware. This is where you'll have like awesome documentation and uh, SDKs, uh, et cetera. Then uh, another thing which is uh, really, really uh, visible when you actually touch it is the non um, the API are not homogeneous across products. Why? Well, it's because they've been acquiring different products. Uh, those products have been like, tied together, and all APIs have been uh, kind of like, been like put, but they're like different. So for instance, if you start like programming vCloud Director and vSphere, you will have to look at some point on how for one VM that is in vCloud Director and another one in vSphere, how you can actually link them together and, and uniquely notify it. That's one of the mo uh, most common things that you will do uh, at the beginning. Uh, then, of course, there's a lot of uh, XML uh, subtype of endpoints, so very chatty, very different from uh, what we have nowadays with, uh, let's say, newest technologies such as OpenStack, which are like REST API usually. And uh, the drama is that there are very few, very few developers actually interested in uh, the, 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 developer as, the developer part uh, uh, on, open, on VMware. 
So it's kind of like a, it's a, it's really a problem uh, because um, you know if you talk to developers right now, what do they want to do? They want to do uh, AWS, right? We all know that, and we're hoping that uh, they will they will want to do a lot of OpenStack as well, but um, definitely not VMware. Very complicated to find. So as a result, what you have is a you know a very specialized enterprise type of community of developers which is nothing uh, like what OpenStack could actually offer in that regard. And, uh, you know, you, <clears throat> you've been at the conference for one week. I mean, you all know that uh, developers have uh, an awesome tooling on OpenStack, for instance, DevStack. If you're a developer, you want to do OpenStack, very easy. You get a DevStack, you run one command or two commands, or you use a, an actual appliance, and you can get going, hack in Python, and test it out. In VMware, it's different. You have to actually have, you, you need someone like Justin who actually knows what to set up, how to configure, tie them together, put it somewhere, put the API, tells you where, where, where's the API endpoint. Uh, it's, it's pretty heavy and it really requires someone with deep, deep knowledge at the lowest level, which is like really a, a kind of problem. Now, having said all that, it looks like pretty bad, but like actually uh, the result, if you're playing the game, if you dig into it, uh, and you're building like a product while well, it's actually working great. So the several reason why it's working great is because the VMware stack is actually really full feature, stable, it's robust, and you actually have you know, some documentation, lots of uh, API, uh, and, uh, and everything is actually out there. They are, as well, the API compatibility is really great. Uh, I mean, I'm not even sure they've been ever deprecating something. Uh, and they have like l uh, pretty long uh, release cycles. We're talking for major products around one year, and, uh, and it gives you uh, some time to actually anticipate change uh, on your uh, custom applications. Then they have something called the beta program that allows you to actually test and get feedback, uh, uh, test and give feedback or report bugs uh, on their um, products that will be released. So it's pretty interesting as well. So that's an example of our uh, cloud management portal, which is uh, built 100% against uh, the uh, vCloud director, vSphere, vShield manager, leveraging their API from a Java uh, platform. So uh, what we do here is basically uh, we leverage a lot of the vSphere uh, performance counters, so all vSphere APIs. Uh, we tie that to uh, compute uh, usage, uh, then costs. Uh, it's connected to Salesforce. Uh, we, so we have alerts based on the, the actual usage, and we have uh, we started introducing some cloud management features, such as you know starting a VM, resizing a VM, uh, etc., setting networks, disk, resizing disk, etc. But this is just the uh, infantry of it at the moment. So we usually provide that portal in addition to uh, vCloud Director, so that customer can actually go to vCloud Director and uh, and perform the cloud management features. So. <clears throat> Having said that, we have our application working, technology, we're pretty happy at the operation level, so why are we actually looking at OpenStack, right? Well, there's like a certain amount of things that we actually like about OpenStack. The first thing is that, you know, the API are open and we believe will become one of the standard uh, cloud API, API in the future. So what it means is that, uh, you know, if we talk about developer attraction, um, you have a better chance to actually uh, find people that will be uh, inclined at programming our stack if we're having an OpenStack endpoint in addition to uh, the, 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 the VMR one. And there's a reason for that is because, well, the REST API are like really modern, they're consistent across all components, they're well documented, um, and, uh, and, and it's very att att uh, attractive. Now, another thing is, uh, you know, remember I told you we needed like someone like Justin to set up the developer boxes, the sandbox, like everything, like well, with uh, OpenStack. Developers, they don't have to worry what's running. What's the sun technology? How's the network configured? Uh, is it running on an appliance? Like, etc. This is like pretty big deal because developers don't have to worry about that. Just like take the API and build the application uh, as fast as possible. Then uh, something that we're looking for as well is the interoperability with third-party application. So what, is, what does it mean? Let me give, give, you, an, give you an example. Uh, let's say you want to do a QN testing using continuous integration systems such as Jenkins or Bamboo or whatever you want. Well, if you're using a AWS, 
you can actually download the plugin, configure uh, the couple of parameters, click a button, and boom, you can actually deploy at uh, AWS. Uh, Rackspace, OpenStack is going to be the same. But if you do vCloud, you have a problem. You have to do it yourself. Meaning, like, you can actually do it, but you have to program the plugin, register the plugin, take care of yourself. So this is, this, this is, a, pro this is a problem. And uh, of course, with OpenStack, no more um, religious debate around Java. You just use the REST API, and you're good to go. You can choose Go or like Pascal or Basic, like whatever you want. You can just do it. Uh, so I'm not going to say again, but because you've been hearing it uh, a million times this week, I'm sure, the culture and community. But this is something like both Justin and I were coming from uh, that, um, that, open source, uh, that open source world, uh, sharing of knowledge, etc. So we're really excited on getting back uh, inside that such community at the moment. So now the documentation, it's an interesting point for OpenStack. On the one hand, you have uh, a lot of documentation, very easy to find, very well organized. I mean, extremely good job uh, uh, in, on that side. But at the same time, when you're a developer, well, the release cycle for OpenStack, there's six months. So if you're actually you know, developing like a Neutron plugin or something like that, you better be like, you know, opening Python and reading the code. So don't throw uh, stones at me, but uh, this is like, you know, kind of the reality most of the time. Why? Because the technology is moving so fast at the moment, at the moment that uh, the only way to make sure that you have an accurate information is actually sometimes to, to read the code. And uh, coming from the Zoop world 15 years ago, uh, I kind of like reminded me a uh, couple of, uh, couple of uh, uh, past experiences. So, uh, so on our side, we actually we started already uh, integrating OpenStack on top, on top of, uh, of VMware. And what are the challenges that we're having? So first, there's this uh, resource pools versus instance-based models. So in VMware, uh, you have resource pools, which is basically a certain amount of RAM, vCPUs, disk. Uh, and in OpenStack land, you basically have instances that are pre-configured with a certain size. And uh, as a result, for the customers, uh, if you're in VMware land, you get billed by the type of VDC you're having. And if you're in a, more on, on an OpenStack model, you will be built by the hour depending on an instance type. So this is something, this is kind of challenging to get like a, 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 an hybrid version of our cloud management portal. Um, this is one of them. Now, there's another thing in VMware which is like really nice is the vApp notion. So this is something that you don't have in OpenStack. And this is something that we find our customer actually, actually like a lot and use a lot. Um, so we, are, we actually haven't like, really talked about it at the moment, but I just wanted to mention it because this is something that, uh, that's missing, uh, that will be missing for us if we provide some OpenStack uh, offering. Then uh, another thing that we, 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 we are missing is a neutral plugin for VCNS. Uh, so <clears throat> if, you, if you saw uh, uh, other presentation from the VMware crew, they've been presenting NSX, which is really nice. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of legacy um, deployment using VCNS at the moment. And uh, it's important for us to be able to, to support those guys uh, during the transition. So we're actually working on that. Um, it's been a couple of times. But we're not interested in a fully VCNS compliant Neutron plugin. We're just interested in a Neutron plugin uh, on our site that handles the case of uh, vSphere, VCNS, and OpenStack deployment. So no KVM, open vSwitch, and all that. Uh, and uh, if you want the big challenges, so I'm going to show you that here. So sorry about the, <laughs> the ugly uh, schema. I did that like quickly. Just wanted to show you uh, exactly what's happening. So on the, um, on the left side, you have our portal, which is basically a web application or a mobile application. <coughs> and we have our own API. So our own API, the proprietary, that's our own set of API. That's basically uh, uh, giving you access to the platform. And the platform is responsible to connect to the different APIs. So right now, we're using, uh, we are leveraging vCloud API, the vShield API, and the vSphere API, right, behind the scene. So the portal is actually directly hitting those. And developer, uh, external developer, customer can use our API as well. Or they can use the vCloud API as well. We open them the, the, the same way. So what we would like to do is to do the same with OpenStack in the middle, having the platform actually using uh, the, the OpenStack API the same way they use the VMware API. And depending uh, on the, the, the type of deployment the, the, the customer is on, so either an OpenStack deployment or a vCloud, giving access to both our API and the native uh, uh, OpenStack API. 
And if we go back, um, the challenge for us is migrating from our proprietary API toward uh, the OpenStack ones. And there's something like, uh, called extensions in the OpenStack API that are really nice and that could allow us to minimize our own proprietary API and give them access to only OpenStack ones. Uh, so, <clears throat> what does it mean for us like, uh, at the end? So, we told you about like, all those connection plans on, on VMware, but there's something that we're not really interested about is the ho uh, horizon front end. We'll be uh, basically abstracting the, uh, the access to OpenStack at our portal level, and we want to uh, support and continue to support both vCloud Director and uh, OpenStack. And now the big thing that we really want to achieve is giving the ability uh, for our customer to actually use their tool, like the developers, like SoulStack, Ubuntu Juju, Chef, all the tools that they use with any other clouds, that they don't have to write drivers for the cloud, uh, for the cloud director anymore, that they can just like, use the native OpenStack API and the open source plugin they, they, they can actually find. And uh, I think we are <clears throat> we'll be interested about contributing code and, and, uh, and, and a lot of different things uh, uh, to, to the, back to the community. Uh, and we've been talking with the VMware crew, and uh, we'll be happy to, to sing with them and see uh, how we can actually help the matter for VCNS and, and possibly other things. Uh, so, thank you. I'm going to let uh, Justin wrap up uh, the presentation. All right, so thanks, Julian. So, I guess the, the end all goal of this uh, presentation was that you know, we are a VMware provider, we are a vCloud provider, and we're actually uh, developing our OpenStack platform to, to work in conjunction. And again, if you remember from my uh, diagram that we want to maintain our, uh, our pod architecture, something that's tried and true, could equate to your architecture as well, something that you know and run today. Don't be afraid to uh, start looking at putting OpenStack on, on top of it and not change the guts, I guess. VMware backend and low-level integration, the same. It's kind of repeat about uh, repeat of what I just said. It's it's all about for us keeping that operational efficiency, SLAs, and things like that that we need, or that our customers depend on, and we feel that VMware is, uh, will continually to do that uh, for us. And then, uh, as Julian mentioned too, we feel that the uh, the vCloud environment or the vCloud API that VMware provides is gaining momentum, and again, we will continue to support it. Uh, but we also feel that the OpenStack offering, or the, our OpenStack offering, will give more uh, features for developers and bring our expertise into the different verticals that we have, or verticals that our customers need, and allow their developers to develop against a cloud that may be PCI compliant. Uh, one thing uh, that I just noticed is that I think I skipped a slide. So. Uh, back on uh, our talk about OpenStack integration with VMware, I think it's uh, useful to mention uh, two things. One is, and I don't know if anybody here attended the, the talks yesterday uh, around by the VMware team and the different distros, but be aware that uh, VMware announced four uh, distribution supports for all the VMware integration. And yesterday, uh, Red Hat, SUSE, Mirantis, and Ubuntu uh, all showed what they do to uh, integrate v uh, VMware uh, pretty systematically. So what I mean by that is maybe you can bring up a VMware, uh, I'm sorry, an OpenStack setup on the distro of choice, and then some of these guys actually had a wizard. So you open up a web page, you type in your vCenter IP, you type in your NSX IP, and you click go, and, and this stuff works. Another thing that VMware does that I'm not sure if anybody is uh, aware of is VMware has a website called communities.vmware.com, uh, and they have an OpenStack section. What the VMware team at, v, uh, at, what the OpenStack team at VMware does is they create something called a VOVA. And basically, it's an OVA appliance that has uh, OpenStack configured from top to bottom on it. You configure a couple settings, like what DV switch you're going to use, which uh, vCenter IP, username, password, and things like that. And you can get up and running with OpenStack within five minutes. So you do need to have vCenter. You do need to have a couple things configured, but the documentation is very easy to read. And sorry, I forgot to mention that. So finally, thanks for uh, coming to our uh, presentation today. Uh, my contact and Julian's contacts up there. Uh, it seems like a mantra that every presentation I see, the companies talk about that they're hiring. Uh, alas, uh, Island is hiring as well. We're looking for VMware and uh, developers that are interested around OpenStack and VMware. Also, I put a link, uh, a tiny URL link to this presentation. It's online now. If we went too fast or skipped over something that you'd like to see, uh, it's online. And then finally, what I think is very helpful, uh, I see people taking pictures, but this is online too. Uh, 
everything I talked about today from a product perspective in the corresponding developer uh, information about it is in my last two helpful link slide. Again, it's online, but I feel that that would be very helpful for everybody because I looked at, uh, like I said, I've been using VMware for a while now. I'm familiar with the terminology, but when Julian came on board, he was going crazy with all the V stuff I said, and it's actually hard to navigate VMware site to find this. So we created this simple uh, link structure so that you guys could get to it very easy. Thanks a lot. Thank you.